This is problem 5.118. It's on page 290. A scratch awl has a plastic handle and a steel blade and shank. Knowing that the density of plastic is 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter and of steel is 7,860 kilograms per cubic meter, locate the center of gravity of the awl. If we sketch the awl, it looks something like this. Obviously this is all round, it's all revolved, about a central axis. And the, this would be a cross section here I suppose. The steel portion of the awl looks something like that with a cone on the end. The dimensions are as follows, there's a 25 millimeter diameter a, from the tangent point out to the end is 80 millimeters. From the end to the, the back side of the steel portion is 50 millimeters. There's a further 90 millimeters out to the um, cone, and then the cone is 10 millimeters long. The shank, or the, the I guess the shaft portion, is three and a half millimeter diameter. Uh, so they said that the density of uh, the plastic handle section was 1,030. The density of the steel portion was 7860. And these are what kilograms per cubic meter? Let's double check that. Yeah, kilograms per cubic meter. All right. <clears throat> now, since the, the item is revolved, you know that the centroid uh, or the, the balance point is going to lie on the line going through the center of the thing. The question is how far over. So, what I chose to do was just to arbitrarily establish an x-coordinate system that starts at the very butt of the all and increases positively to the right. So um, that way I could indicate the position. And then I broke up the all into a couple of different parts. There's a solid body that's the hemisphere on the back. That's a positive part. There's actually material there that's being added. There's the handle portion. That's another positive part. But then I pulled out I'm going to draw it over here, but it actually belongs right inside of here. It's a negative part. I was trying to make different bodies to represent the various volumes and weights that either were present or that were removed, because some of the plastics actually were removed. So this is going to be a negative weight. Body three will be. And then I went ahead and took the shaft, the 50 millimeter plus 90 millimeter, out. So to be clear, this is 50 millimeter plus 90 millimeter. That's the overall length. That's a positive, or you know, it's going to increase weight. And then I have the cone on the end, which is also positive. So body four, body five finishes off this scratch hole. And then I thought it would be wise to set up a table. So let's do that here. We'll have bodies uh, one, two, three four and five, volume in cubic millimeters. And what we want to do is just calculate the volume of each of these. So let's start with body one. I may have to erase some of the work here, but anyway, volume one, well, let's see. That's just a hemisphere. We need the, the equation for a, the volume of a sphere, and that's 4 thirds pi r cubed, but we've only got a hemisphere, so it's half of that. So 4 thirds pi 25 over 2 millimeters cubed divided by 2. And we end up with a volume. So I'm going to go ahead and just write the volume in up here. So this will be the volume of body 1, which is a hemisphere. And that came out to about 4,090.6154 millimeters cubed. That's what this number comes out to be. 
the location of the centroid of that hemisphere, I looked up, it's simpler than I thought. The, the location of the centroid is only three-eighths of the radius off of the, the bottom. So in other words, it's five-eighths of the, the distance, five-eighths of the radius of the hemisphere from what I've defined as x equal to zero. So x bar, the way I wrote it out was the radius 25 over 2. So go from here to here and then come back three-eighths of the radius. I could have just said five-eighths of the radius, because that's the distance from the, the tangent point back here to the centroid. Anyway, that comes out to a number. I'm going to put an x bar up here for the location of the centroid, and it will be in millimeters. And I've just realized I messed up my units a little bit, but it'll all work out because the units will cancel. Uh, anyway, this comes out to 7.8125 millimeters. Let me just put some dividing lines in here. So be clear where everything goes. So that's what I needed for this body. Now I also decided I should write down the density for each of these parts in kilograms per cubic meter. Since this is plastic, that must be 1030 or 1030. Okay? So that takes care of body one. Now let's move on to body two. So body two is this large cylinder, the handle. For that, the volume is simply pi r squared h, because we just need the area of a circle times, you know, the area of a circle times the height where h, of course, is going to be the length of this thing, which is 80 millimeters. So pi, r is still 25 millimeters over 2, which is 25 millimeters of diameter, got to square that, times the length 80 millimeters. Plug all that into your calculator, and you'll find the volume for body 2, the handle, the bulk of the handle, is 39,269.9 cubic millimeters. The location of the centroid would just be the radius plus 80 millimeters divided by 2. So x bar 2, this would be x bar 1 by the way, x bar 2 would just be 25 millimeters over 2 plus 80 millimeters over 2. Right? Because 25 millimeters over 2 just gives us the thickness of this hemisphere. 80 millimeters over 2 gives us you know, 40 millimeters on in 2 the body of the, the handle. So if you do the math, you know, pretty easy, it's half of 105, it's 52 and a half millimeters. Of course the density there is also 1030 because we're dealing with plastic. As a matter of fact, you'll notice that body three is also plastic. We're going to have a negative volume here <coughs> because this is volume that's been removed. But it's still, what's being removed is something that has the density of plastic, right? So we'll go ahead and fill that in. All right, so now let's uh, get some space here. Go with body one. Let's deal with body three next. As I said, it's going to be a negative volume. It's also just a cylinder, but with different dimensions. So the volume of body three would be negative pi r squared h. We're now talking about the length of this, this cutout section, 50 millimeters, and a different radius, the smaller radius now. So that's negative pi r is, well, they gave me diameter for that section, 3.5 millimeters. I'll have to divide that by 2 degree radius squared length, 50 millimeters. And that comes out, when you plug it into your calculator, to about negative uh, 481.0564. Cubic millimeters. Now let me be clear, I performed all of these calculations in the spreadsheet, so once I get to the end, if your numbers don't quite match, it's because I hadn't rounded off anything in the spreadsheet, like I'm doing here. Alright, what about x bar? Where is the centroid of that body? Well, let's see, what I've decided to do is start here, go all the way to here and come back half of 50 millimeters. So that actually, let's see, well, it would be almost like this. So it would be 25 millimeters over 2. That gives me the thickness of the hemisphere plus 80 millimeters to move on out to the end of the handle. 
and now I'm here, I need to move back half of 50 millimeters, let's just write it that way. Okay. And so that number came out to 67 and a half millimeters. So that takes care of body three. Well, body two is done also. We'll get that. Body three is done now. Body four is next up. Now body four is the first body that is made of steel, so we need the density of steel for actually both bodies four and five, and they gave that to us as 7860 kilograms per cubic meter. Notice, however, I've got cubic millimeters, and I didn't notice that when I was working through the problem in the spreadsheet. It'll all come out okay, I'll show you why. So now we need to know you know, volume, central location. Again, this is just another um, column. So we're going to use the same equation, just for, uh, I'm sorry, just pi r squared over, or pi r squared times h. Pardon. So the radius we're talking about is the radius of the shank, and that is three and a half millimeters over two. The length would be the length of the shank, 50 plus 90, well that's 140 millimeters. Plug all that into your calculator and you will find the volume of the, the rod section of the shank. And that's 1346.9579. And then X bar 4, the location of the centroid, well, for that, I'm going to need 25 millimeters over 2. Give me the radius of the hemisphere again. Plus 80. In order to move out to the end of the handle. And then I said plus 90 to get out here. And then let's move back half the length. So minus 140 millimeters over 2. <coughs> That position comes out to 112 and a half millimeters. And then finally, for body five, the cone, let me just go ahead and do that here since the cone is on the right anyway. For body five, the cone, I had to look up the equation for the volume of a cone, and that is just pi over three a cubed h, where a is just the radius. So that would be pi over three times three and a half millimeters over two cubed times h, where h is the height of the cone, which is just 10 millimeters. And so that volume comes out to about 32.0704 cubic millimeters. X bar 5, the location of the centroid of that cone, turns out it's just a quarter of the way in, so a quarter of 10 millimeters, that's 2.5 millimeters. So all I really need to do is go from the back side of the hemisphere all the way out to the base of the uh, cone and then add 2.5 millimeters. So that's what I did. <coughs> 25 millimeters over 2 plus 80 millimeters to move out along the handle, plus another 90 millimeters to move out the rest of the shank to the base of the cone, plus 10 millimeters divided by uh, four. And so a quarter of the way out into the cone is what I'm writing there. That comes out to 185 millimeters. So now we've got everything we need in the table from the geometry, and we can start performing some calculations. For example, we can calculate the weight, and what I did, I went ahead and multiplied density times volume. I need to be careful here, I need to be more careful, because the units of this column are going to be kilograms per cubic meter times cubic millimeters. I was thinking that volume would cancel, and I'd have to do a conversion to, to do that. But the units of the number that I'm going to put in here, all I'm going to do is multiply density times volume. Okay? When I did that, here's what I came up with. Uh, 4,213,334 uh, 
uh, for body one, 40 million, 448,000, five for body two, negative 495,488 for body three, 10,587,089 for body four, and then 252,074 for body five. Now, as I said, the units are kind of odd, but you'll see what happens to them here in just a moment. And then what I wanted to do is take the moment of the weight. So X bar, separate these out, X bar times weight. So now my units are going to be kilograms per cubic meter times millimeters to the fourth power because the, the position information I have is in millimeters. So that will raise the order of the millimeters by one. The length is about one in millimeters. So I got uh, 32,916,671 and then Excel started uh, putting things in scientific notation. I just didn't feel like changing it. So 2.12 E9 just means 2.12 times 10 to the ninth power. Then for body 3, negative 3.3 E7 or uh, 10 million, three, negative 3.3 3 times 10 million. Then 1.19 E9, or times 10 to the 9th for body 4. And then for whatever reason, it was back to uh, just regular numbers, not scientific notation, for body 5. Uh, probably was a small enough number, it didn't choke on it. So 46,633,605. And so noting the units, let's just leave those units there for a second. Let me skip over the units and say I need to sum each of these columns because the equation I'm going to use to locate the centroid or the, the balance point of all of these things, x bar, is the sum of the moment of all the weights divided by the total weight. So I will need to, total, I will need to sum the total weight column and the moment of all the weights. When you do that, of course I'll let Excel do it. And I highly recommend working in Excel with these things. If you haven't used Excel, you are going, you're going to have a whole lot of uh, work to do here with your calculator. You, you will make a mistake. I made a mistake on this problem and uh, another one I was working with. And when I put it all into Excel, it corrected me. So you should use Excel for sure. So 55,5013 is the sum of all the weights in really odd units. And then the moment of those weights, Excel just went to scientific notation 3.36E9 for the sum of the moment of all of those weights. So now I can plug all that in here, 3.36 E9. Again, since I have so few decimal places here, um, you, if you type this into a calculator, you may not get exactly what I've got here. But as I said, I did it in Excel. This comes out to about 61.10 millimeters. That's how precise it is. And so 61 millimeters is the balance point. Well, let's see. So this is 25 over 2, 12 and a half. 12 and a half. So we're looking at about 50 more, roughly, a little less. So the balance point's in here somewhere, which makes sense because the, you know, you've got a, a decent amount of weight out here because you're you're dealing with steel with the all the actual business end of the all and plastic on the handle end. 